Yo, this video here was supposed to be a testimonial for my boot camps page, but this ex-student of mine came up with so much golden stuff. It's so inspirational what he's done and what he's learned, and he shared so much of it in this freaking talk we had. I was like, nope, everybody needs to see this. It's long and it's freaking worth it. So enjoy. Everybody, I'm here in Austin, <laughs> Texas with Jay Juster. And uh Basically, he found out I was doing a program here, and he, he trained with me three years ago, and he's like, dude, what the fuck, you're in Texas! And uh, apparently he has some stuff to tell me, because I haven't really connected with him in three freaking years! And so I thought, let's whip the camera out and see uh, how this gentleman's doing with his crazy terrorist beard uh, after three years. So, what the hell is going on, dude? What's happened? Yeah, three years ago, I remember taking your boot camp. I was in college at the time. And it's just social freedom exercise after social freedom exercise, where you go and you do the most ridiculous stuff you could possibly think of doing. Like, if right now anybody who hasn't taken Sasha's boot camp is like, I wonder what's the craziest thing that I could do if I were to go up to a girl, not as crazy as what this guy is going to have you do on the boot camp, which in a way scares some guys, but that's the point is he pushes you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And even though it creates a lot of anxiety, He's gonna punch you in the face if you don't do it. Number one. <laughs> and uh, number two, he starts it off really slow and really small. So that way you realize, okay, I just did something that was kind of weird, but not crazy weird, and the world didn't end. And it's this weird realization where when you get progressively more and more crazy and stupid, the world keeps not ending. And even though, like, I remember I did this one that it literally, I went cold afterwards. I almost passed out. I had to like sit down on the curb and you were like, dude, what just happened to you? Are you even okay? And it was, it's this exercise. Can You're I, hot, can I right? talk about it? Yeah, yeah, I remember the one. It was by the yeah. escalator in the mall. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. And I was just, and you were like, dude, no, you actually have to go and go again. Go talk to that girl again. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. That's what I have to do right now. You're like, I'm going to punch you in the face. So I, you know, I went over and I kept, I kept doing it. And there was the this weird... Punch for, the, for the record, no one gets a punch in the face. Worst case scenario, in the shoulder. No That's people were, were harmed during the making yeah, of the yeah, boot camp. Get, I, <laughs> I had pictures of guys with a bruise in the arm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And it was one of those experiences where... Oh, yeah. What's up? Excuse me. Just want to let you know, sorry, cool. pretending that you need to work to flirt with one of us guys. We're actually having some guy time. Oh, Normally sorry. we would flirt with you, but it's not tonight. Yeah. Sure, sure. That's that's totally fine. Tomorrow though, we'll be here tomorrow. So, okay. You were saying? Yeah. So they always do that. Oh, hey, I'm just, uh, I'm just yeah, just getting uh -huh. for it. Yeah. That was a sure, sure, buddy. Number one line. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> you do the most ridiculous things that you could imagine, reapproaching a girl that has already rejected you, and doing it anyway. You know, just continuing to talk to a girl after it seems like she's already brushed you off and blown you out. And when you push past those boundaries and continue to just talk, continue to demonstrate your interest, whatever it is, something really weird starts to happen actually. At least for me, it was this interesting experience where I was like, wait, all of a sudden they're realizing they can't reject me and it would turn them on. It would get them actually more attracted to me than any line or doing anything like smooth and super right could because they were like, wait a minute, I just told this guy to fuck off and he's still here. He doesn't care. This is, an, this is a man, like this is a real dude who is going to go after what he wants even if somebody is like, no, you shouldn't do that. And being able to have that kind of power and really a, a self-esteem is really what it comes down to, is it comes down to having more emphasis on yourself, on what you want, and being able to go after that despite what other people think. When I took the program, I was in college, which is the best time to take this kind of a program because there are girls everywhere, right? And when you're in college, at least for me, what started to happen was I would be so scared to approach women because I learned all of this pickup material. There's so much where it's like, oh, I have 17 different things that I could say. What do I, which one do I use? But it's like, you could say the stupidest shit. It doesn't even matter. And it will still work if you can own it. If you can stick to it and really make that just the way that you are. You know what I mean? So here's the thing, man. Here's what's really cool. I ended up 
after taking your boot camp, just going up to girls in class, going up to girls around the university when I was walking in between classes, and just random girls that I would see during the day, and I would stop conversations that I was having with my friends, I would stop conversations I was having on the phone, and I would just be like, hey, I gotta go do something, and I would go approach them. And I would just go say hi, I'd go say, what's up? You're fucking hot, let's talk, let's go get lunch, because in college, what, you can instant date, because there's coffee shops everywhere, you can take them back to your place because it's at most, what, like 500 yards away or whatever. It's the most beautiful social situation you could imagine. And being able to have like no social limitation where you feel like you have to know that person, you have to be a part of their social circle because oh, she already probably has 10 guys who are already hitting on her, why would she want to, want to pick me or like, oh, I'm not experienced enough, I'm too young, I'm not a senior, or I am a senior. There's just a million and one excuses. It doesn't even fucking matter. Like, you get out of college and you're like, oh, I'm 23, or oh, I'm 63, or oh, I don't have facial hair. I do have facial hair. It's literally anything that you want to make a reason can become an excuse that'll hold you back. And what you're proving to guys through the, the exercises that you do is it's just like, doesn't matter what you say, doesn't matter how you say it, doesn't matter what you wear, doesn't matter how much experience you have, especially when it comes to cold approaching a stranger, your whole past is erased in that moment when you go up and talk to someone. So it's all about that first three to five minutes, even less, I mean the first three to five seconds really. I'm just being able to say like, yo, what's up? You're hot. I Let's dig, I dig you. Oh, well, well. Let's not make a baby and I'll wear a condom. And then she's like, Yes, finally, a dude who puts safety first. That's what's cool. No STDs here. It's Even like though... That would be epic. What? I like that. I, I actually... Sex. I use condoms. I'm pretty sure I've said that before. Oh, I've dude, pull, that if, you, awesome. if you like pull out a condom and you don't even, like you're not even talking about the condom, but like you're talking and you, you pull out your phone to get her number and you have a condom with you, dude, it is like so much better. Than really? if you just pull out your phone. That's great. Yeah, I don't dude, do that on tip, secret I tip, it, exclusive. But... If me kissing him wasn't enough, pull out your <laughs> phone with a condom in your hand and like accidentally do it, right? And then just be like, oh, give me your number. But don't say anything like, oh shit, I have a condom. Just put it back in your pocket. And she'll be like, this dude's good to go. Whenever she goes home with you, she'll be like, he's got protection, I already know. And when you get there, you're like, oh, this is my brother, so it's too small for me. Um, gotta get my magnet in the top it. drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that's good. That's, cool. that's a good little trick. Yeah, hey, I mean, we're all about tricks here, right? That's right. It's all about manipulative tactics. <laughs> How to make girls want to have sex with you because they know they're not going to get AIDS. Whoa. I don't it. Um, no, so, uh, yeah, so what else? So give us some more actual juicy stuff. What's happening? Yeah, okay, so. You start approaching girls and hammers. So, okay, so here's what's cool is you start getting numbers and you start figuring out, okay, how do I ask for the number? You know, you start figuring out how do I reduce flakes? How do I act on a date? How do I get them back to my place? How do I escalate? How do I continue the relationship after we have sex? And it's like, you get all of these experiences that end up going into your own life lessons, right? Because it's no longer based on what some dude told you in a book or video that you watch. It's like, dude, this is my fucking life and I've owned it and I've lived it. So there's no longer a question. Okay, so there's, there's actually been quite a few stories where I was surprised about what went down because of the timeline that it happened. So I was sitting behind a girl in class and I'd been in that situation so many times before, you know what I mean? You're in a class and you see a girl and you're just like, oh my God, I wanna fucking talk to this girl, but she's way too hot. She's out of my league, you know, she's already getting hit on by other dudes. And I was like, dude, you know what? Fuck that, I'm gonna talk to her. So I started talking to her just about like nothing and it's awesome, but what ended up being cool is when we were walking out of class, I continued walking with her, and I was like, hey, you're really cool and fucking awesome. Like, it's really cool talking to you and I'm attracted to you. We should hang out sometime. And she was into it, man. Like, before I would have just been like, oh, I should ask her if we could study together and like talk about the class or like exchange notes or something. But I was like, no, fuck that. So I, w I told her that I was into her and that we should go on a date. Like, what are you doing Thursday? Do you want to go get Froya with me? She was like, yeah, cool. Froyo bitches! Yeah, so that's actually, dude, this is gonna be something crazy. Um, every single girl likes frozen yogurt. I don't know why, but it's literally like, <laughs> every single girl likes frozen yogurt. She likes it, 
they all like it at that table over there. But okay, so you ask a girl to go hey, to frozen uh, yogurt. You guys all like frozen yogurt? All right, just checking, just checking. Just four for four. Just making sure. Four out of four women agree. Well, frozen yogurt, yogurt is amazing. Yes, please. She also likes it. All right, it. Okay, there we go. You can continue. Sweet. So here's here's the great stuff. This girl is really hot, and the whole time I'm thinking she's out of my league. But we're talking about sex. You know, we're talking about the things that turn her on over frozen yogurt on a first date, right? I didn't even pay for frozen yogurt. What the fuck is that about? Talk Free about yogurt, bitches. Talk about like. Uh, uh, a shift in mindset where you're not bringing a girl to, to dinner in a movie, you're not dropping 30 bucks. I didn't even pay for her, right? And we're still getting to talk about sex. So here's what's cool. I'm like, hey, I gotta go to CVS to buy some milk, right? And just come with me, it's walking distance. We walk down the block, we go in, and we're like shopping now, right? We're like boyfriend and girlfriend or something. It's not a typical date where it seems like I'm trying to game her and trying to get in her pants. We're just hanging out, right? We get milk, and you gotta refrigerate milk. You can't just fucking keep that shit out. So I'm like, hey, before we go to a bar, let's go back to my place. I gotta put this in the fridge real quick. So when we get there, and this actually happened to me a lot when it started happening, uh, I would kind of gauge her reaction when she would open my door, especially because it's like a fraternity room. So it's pretty much you open the door, that's all there is. It's not like you gotta give a girl a tour. It's like, here's my bed, here's my couch, here's my TV. Okay, <laughs> right? So she pretty much got the glimpse of everything, but she walked inside. And I've sort of learned that if a girl is comfortable walking inside, she's gonna be comfortable kissing you. Because she's basically saying, yeah, I'm cool, I'm comfortable with you and your, and your home. So dude, here it is. I put my milk in the fridge, I turned around, and this is where so many guys fuck up. But this is what it is, man, is I slowed down the way that I was talking. And I was looking at her in the eyes and slowly getting closer and adding pauses because it's like I'm telling you a secret, right? And I could see, so if a girl was giving me this face, this is perfect. And I like how you like zoomed in, like they're actually gonna kiss again. Uh, She's getting really wet right oh, now. Oh dude, I can feel the humidity. Uh, so if a girl was giving me that face, that would be all I needed. You know, I don't need to be like, oh, you have a twinkle in your eye. It looks like you wanna kiss me. Or like try to do some crazy voodoo magic. It's literally like you just drop your voice. You just add pauses like you're telling a story and you just see how she reacts as you move in closer. And her brain will be like, oh yeah, he's trying to tell me a story because he dropped his voice, so it makes sense that he's gonna get closer. But then her brain is also gonna be like, oh man, am I getting turned on or not? Am I, do I wanna kiss him? And if she stays there, it's yes, it's yes. So we started making out, and we're in a fraternity bedroom, so I mean, you pretty much know what happens there. So dude, if you guys wanna take that template and run with it, it'll get you a lot of success just because it's literally like breaking every single norm that you would expect. And uh, what is it called, time bridging? Where essentially you go on multiple dates and yeah, it yeah. sort of puts something in their mind where they're like, well, I throw you with this guy. I was at a, I was at a CVS or whatever with this guy. <laughs> and uh, I like, you guys are walking together and all this stuff. So you just did like a whole bunch of shit together in a very quick amount of time. So what would usually take guys like three to seven dates to accomplish, cause like, if you just drive to a, a dinner place together, meet up and leave, that's all you guys did. You only ate at one place, but like you have Froyo, then you walk, then you are someplace else, then you walk again, you're someplace else. It's like a whole bunch of shit you guys just did in a very short amount of time. She's gonna be comfortable and know, she will know whether or not she wants to hook up with you. And if you make the move, we were actually talking about this earlier, if you make the move and you make it happen, she will not only let it happen, but she will respect you so much more as a man. And that's really what this is all is about, is like tapping back into your masculinity, into what it is that you really want, and not letting anybody else dictate your behavior, not letting awkwardness or social norms or what people have told you is like a solid date structure fuck with you at all. Like, don't even let what we're telling you here be like be all and end all of your life. Just go out and do shit. Go out and experiment. Go and see for yourself if you can like just say random shit in front of girls because at the end of the day, you will have, when you have a hundred, when you have a thousand different approaches under your belt, you'll know, you'll pick up on patterns of what works and what doesn't work. 
And that's what's really valuable about what you're showing guys is it's like first you show them, hey, the world doesn't end, so they get over that shit. And then it's like, okay, well now that I know I can just do things with strangers that I won't ever see again anyway, I wonder how I can make this into something that will actually benefit me in the long term. And them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, that's what's cool is like, build, that's what it is. It's a self-esteem where you realize like, I am a valuable person. So going up and starting this relationship is going to take them from whatever boring douchebag that they were with before or nobody. Because sometimes hotter, the hotter the girl is, the less sex, good sex she's actually getting. Because like, even if a guy has the balls because he's a badass to like approach her and shit, he probably cannot hold his load once he gets her clothes off. So dude, I mean, especially dude, like tantric hours of sex and all that stuff. When you can develop that self-esteem and start having these positive reinforcing experiences, like that's where you're really going to be able to start having a lot of fun. Because it stops becoming like, what are the rules? What are the guidelines? How do I do this, 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 and this? And it's like, this is the fucking playground of sex and fun. You know what I mean? And when you're on a playground, it's not like you have to follow the rules. It's like you get to fucking have fun. Do whatever you want to do. Can I just say at this point that this is an excellent example of a guy who's really taking the teachings of the boot camp into heart and lived them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because you're basically shaking the shit. It's like, it's almost like, I'm just gonna let you teach the fucking boot camp this weekend. I'll give you a percentage, it'll be beautiful. We have that on camera. So. <laughs> I'll keep most of the money. I'll just do a guest <laughs> show up tomorrow. All right, guys. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hang out for like an hour or two, and uh, I am Sasha. All then, I need yeah, is this yeah. little just thing. Need, I'll here. just chop this off and whack it up here. They'll be like, dude, you look a little different. It's like, yeah, I went paleo. I went full paleo this time. I already, I already know. Dudes are just like Sasha. Just he's the whole thing scripted. You pay that guy to say all this awesome shit. No, this is what happens when you do the boot camp and you actually fucking practice yeah. and go and hit on girls and have experiences. This yeah. is what happens. This is normal. Uh, it's basically when you just take away the shit stopping you from being the man you want to be and you can start going doing that stuff. Let me uh, say let me say this because I do I do want to add a caveat. You can take the boot camp and it'll help you a lot, but at the end of the day you need to have some kind of continuing support system. So if you take his boot camp and think, okay, now I'm good, I would say that that's actually something I would question. And what you should probably do if you're really serious about Sasha and you really want to continue to improve in your life. You need to get on board his continuity program, get on board all of the eBooks that he has, try to do one-on-one -on -one coaching if you can. Because when you meet with him face-to-face -face and he can really interact with you and give you the feedback, that's where you're really gonna find true change. It's not gonna be three days or one day, whatever you're taking, that's gonna all of a sudden transform your life. It's gonna be continuing support and feedback from the same person who's really gonna be there with you and share that mentality so that you can have a more holistic approach to your life instead of just taking instruction about one very specific aspect of it. Because at the end of the day, this is about how to meet women and have that integrate with your health, with your finances, with your business. Because you've done that, man. You've like built a business around this. And it's no longer just like you going out on the streets, hitting on women. It's like you have found a way to, I mean, have something that you can share with the world and improve their lives, just like you're saying, where now you can improve the lives of both men and women. And it doesn't always have to be because you're fucking them. And that's, say, that's cool. A lot of women's <laughs> lives have been improved, but that's a separate story. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it really is whole integration. This is something I rant about a lot. I was talking about last week. Um, when you get the fear out of your life and you can start talking to girls, it just naturally leads to you're realizing, wait a minute, I don't have to have fear in any part of my life. I mean, this is the biggest fear for most guys, right? Coming up to a girl, you think it's a smoking fucking tent. Like, you've never seen a girl saw it. You can walk up to her and be like, damn, girl, you and me need to make some, some babies. Seriously, you and me, I see three kids. All of them beautiful. They'll have your looks and my gifts, um, other gifts. So whatever, and, and, and she just, you know, whatever the fuck happened, you're just okay with it. She tells you to fuck off and you reopen it and you're like, listen, I was just joking around. Seriously though, you would love me. What's your name? And you just don't give a fuck. If you can get to that point, are you really afraid to ask your boss for a raise? Re seriously, really? Really? Are you really afraid to quit your job, sleep on a friend's couch and start that company you've always been fantasizing about that you think might work? Really? Is that really that scary? Nothing is that scary. Nothing. So it's really just like if you smash fear in one area of your life, you're killing it, period. There is only one fear. Fear. It doesn't matter if it's fear of women, fear of change, fear of well, any it doesn't matter. If you if you say, oh there's fear, fuck you, fuck you, you bash the shit out of it, and the next day you wake up, okay, so um Oh wait, there is no fear. 
there's no fear at all. I could just do anything. That's what happens. So this this is really just a funnel into just everything, just success, whatever you want. Dude. It's, just, it's a fear killer. And I did an, one of the best talks I ever did was in Amsterdam, and I regret to this day I never recorded that one. Uh, but it was I opened, I just went up on stage, and the first words out of my mouth was, "I'm not a dating coach. I'm a fear killer." And I ranted for 45 minutes about fear and how it holds you back. Wow. It was fucking epic, and uh, that's really a big part of what this is. Yeah, that's incredible that you've gotten to that point, because I'll say I have not eradicated fear from my life, but what I have done, and it deals with the idea of self-esteem that we were talking about, is even when I'm afraid of something, even when I wake up and I realize I have something major that I have to accomplish that day, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it, I'm up against a deadline or whatever, there's that self-esteem and really a courage that is a part of my life now that wasn't there before where when we're so up in our heads with fear, everything that we do seems it's gonna be the wrong decision, it's gonna make the world end or somebody not like us, and those are really minor things. So being afraid of like judgment, being afraid of of like getting rejected or something. Those are kind of like minor uh, fears, but like you're saying, they are definite representations of fear. Having that self-esteem and that courage from real personal experience to be able to say, you know what? The world isn't going to end and I can make a decision and take a course of action that is true to me. And because I know that when I'm true to myself, I'm gonna positively impact other people. When I'm true to myself, I'm gonna actually be able to do something that is great, as my experience has shown me. Instead of when you're in fear and you don't have the experience and you project all of these horrible things happening and you have no point of reference to really debate or dispute that belief. Man, when you get to a point where you can even start to have points of reference to say, you know what, sometimes it actually ended up working out awesome and the times that it didn't, I learned a shitload. Then even when you're afraid, it's like the worst case scenario, I'm about to learn a lot today. And that's pretty cool, man. Yep. Yep. When I was in pickup, the whole reason why I got into pickup was the fear of failure. And it's marketed in a way where it's trying to tell you this is how you get any woman anywhere at any time. And it's a full no yeah, rejection, ever being rejected, you'll no rejection, no failure. Be rejected. And that's what yeah. it does. It's the marketing myth. And so for me, it almost ingrained without me having it originally, because I think I've always naturally been more afraid of boredom. I think as humans, that's probably our natural. This is the greatest marketing lie of all time in this niche that I'm in uh, that you can get women without ever risking rejection. It doesn't exist ever, it's never existed unless you're maybe like a billionaire or you're like Tom Cruise. Sure, then it probably can happen. But other than that, it doesn't exist. And, and the most attractive thing about a man is the fact that he's willing to take chances to get what he wants, literally. So I wouldn't want to get a, women, a, a woman without that because like, I just wouldn't feel like I've accomplished anything. You know, what's the point if some, some super hot model just walks up to me and goes, I really like it, I want to be with you. Okay, but if something just wouldn't be right there. Yeah. You know, because what's that story? I was sitting there and some girl came up to me and she just thought I was really hot and I made her my girlfriend and uh, lucky me. You know what I'm saying? That's a shit story. But like there was, she was there with her like two of her friends and a fucking two football dudes, and I thought they would kill me. And uh, and I was late for a meeting, and I ran across the street, and almost got hit by a cab, and I ran in front of them. The guy almost punched me in the face. He thought I was robbing her. I was like, no, don't hit me. I just love this girl. I really want to meet her. And I was really honest, and I spoke to her for three minutes, and she thought I was cute. And then she gave me her number, and I thought I was gonna get beat up by these dudes, so they hated me. And then, uh, but now we're all worked out, and we're together. That's a fucking. That's an that's epic a story. story. That would that's be ridiculous. What I want for my story. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I have so many fucking crazy ass stories where there's no fucking way that should have worked, and uh, it did. Yeah, and um, it's interesting because kind of going back to what we were saying earlier is like, I feel like in our natural state, we are more afraid of boredom because we don't know what failure is. When you're a kid, what is failure? Like you're always so eager to share your song or your happiness or your sadness or whatever it is with everyone around you. It's not until we like develop shame and we develop this sense that there are things that we should and shouldn't do that eventually we become so concerned with how we appear to other people. And that's when we start to fear failure. That's right. So in a way that that's question right. is asking like, are you more in tune with your nature or have you been brainwashed? <laughs> like, exactly. So really, like, when you're afraid of failure, it means that you've bought into some, some marketing myth, some societal conditioning. Your brain has been conditioned away from its natural, way it's natural mode yeah 
Yeah, which is which is freedom and expression and uh, fun. And yeah. That's no, like like ever see a fucking you know four year old kid running around naked? And you're like, look at that kid, he's fucking <laughs> naked. That kid's awesome. He doesn't give a shit. Is he afraid of anything? He's just like. Eh. Uh, I would also be that's concerned awesome. about where his parents are, but yeah, yeah at first yeah. I would be like, where's your mommy? <laughs> where's your mommy? Wisdom, they're the closest to absolute love, right? Yeah. That, that, of anyone. So when they come out of there and they're just running around, they don't give a fuck, and they just love everybody. <laughs> Adults are like, oh, that kid's fucking retarded. No, that kid's exactly what we should be completely fearless retarded. and loving everybody and feeling loving life. Yeah. That's, that, that's the normal state, and then we get conditioned to get out of that state, get into, get into fear and, 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 you know, all of this negative shit that's associated yeah. with being a grown up and being responsible. Right. It's bullshit. It's, it's, fucking it's bullshit. It's, and it's a fear based society. That's the thing. Everything is fear. It's funny it's because. Fun. There, there is this extra element of balance that happens when you grow up. So when you're a kid, you don't even know what it means to have the fear of failure. But then it eventually is something that you have to deal with. And I honestly believe that like, part of what used to be the initiation rites into masculinity in other cultures was like, you would go on a vision quest where you would be sent into the wilderness by yourself and you would have to figure out how the fuck to overcome like wild beasts, how to feed yourself. That's the most fearful shit you can go through. Yep. And so what we're talking about here is like what you're presenting guys with your boot camp with your program is an initiation right, man. You're saying, yep. look, all of the fear that you've been taught that you believed in is bullshit. And the way that you're gonna go get over that isn't by thinking about it. It's not by saying affirmations in a mirror all day, every day. It's not by like reading another book. It's by going out and realizing that this conditioned belief that happened from personal experience, mind you. I mean, this is something that was like repeatedly told to you day after day after day until you believed it. You have to put in that same amount of effort where it's day after day after day, you're disproving it. And so you have this balance as we're saying, is like, dude, you're not a four-year-old kid anymore. You're running a business. You're, you're, you have the responsibility of people's lives on your shoulders and their well-being and their, their livelihood, really. So there would be a lot of fear in that if you were gonna project into the future and have no self-esteem and just be like, well, fuck, now they're all relying on me. I'm a piece of shit. And so they're, they're all gonna go broke and this is all just gonna suck. But when you get to a place where you can outgrow the fear of failure, you get back to that natural state, but now you still have so much extra that you get to be an adult. Like how much cooler is it that we can still run around naked, but like inside our own houses because we fucking want to and we're not afraid of it versus the kids who are also not afraid of it, but it's not like they really know the difference. And it's don't, not like they don't know. Don't get the naked kids and adults in the same house though, especially if they're not your kids. <laughs> get in trouble for that. We're just gonna get something straight here as a disclaimer. Do not try this at home. That's what's so cool about the stuff that you're really trying to shake into people. And like, it's funny that people um, have to get to a point in their lives where nothing else is working in a way. Or it's like, they, they're just like, I need something to work. Because, dude, there aren't that many alternatives. Like in our culture, there really aren't that many alternatives. So I mean, how, how much are your boot camps running for now? They've gone up a lot. <laughs> it's like 3,900 a weekend now. Dude, 3,900 $3, dollars is not a lot of money for what you're talking about giving people. I mean. I know that. I tried convincing that to some dude. Geez. He's just like, what? I can buy a really shitty car for that. Yeah, you could. Or you could use your same car and get pussy, which is really what you I've want. I've had guys sell their <laughs> like, You know what's funny? I've had guys sell their cards to do the course or not get a car and they're just, they always come back and they're like, dude, I'm getting fucking laid, fuck yeah. the car. It's yeah, always the seriously. same, like, who gives a shit? <laughs> who gives I'll take a, a shit? bus and then I'll fuck her, then I'll take a bus back. Like, why do you even want to have money in the first place I'm if you're not getting laid? I'm going to fuck, <laughs> who gives a shit? It yeah, dude, matter. it doesn't. Yeah. It's like, what's the point of money if your life is miserable? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you have $3,900, you can spend it on more alcohol, more drugs, or, or more of continuing whatever your shit life is. I know guys who go out, and uh, I asked one of the guys, just, just a normal guy who goes to clubs and shit, I'm like, how much do you spend, like, Friday, Saturday, you go out, take your car parking, get into the club, booze, blah, blah, blah. Like, let's say you weren't, you weren't going too crazy, what do you normally spend? Because at least seven, eight hundred bucks a weekend. Oh. A weekend. This oh, is not even dude. a rich guy or anything. This is just like parking, club admission, all the booze, getting some girls some drink, blah, blah, Yeah, blah, buying 7, drinks. 700 bucks a drink. You can't go out and spend less than 100 bucks. Yeah, you can't. In a real club, less, it's not possible. Especially considering you have to buy the clothes you're gonna wear into the club. So basically, um, you're saving a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? end of the line, if you compare it, $3,900 so that you can get rid of this stuff, this fear that we're talking about, you can tap into who you really are and what you really want and start to approach 
these women, these opportunities that are presenting themselves to you every single day of your life, when people can get past all this fear and all this bullshit, $3,900 in the context of what, like how much do you have to believe you suck if you don't think that well, you can make $3,900? Here's, here's, here's what's really funny. Um, people go in debt like six figures to get degrees that, that'll give them permission to get some job <laughs> which they may never get. Six yeah, figures wow. you, or at wow. least 30, 40K, even for a shitty course. I didn't even think about that, Dude, that's true. Yeah, so you come out of it in debt where you can do my course and just feel free and, and just realize you can do anything and then go and do your own thing. You don't even, you don't, Dude, I had people So take cool. four grand in student loans out right now. And quit. Get on this course. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes, it makes sense. Yeah, I know, but it's hard to realize that until you do it. Then you, like you, you, to you, it's obvious. You've done the boot camp. To me, it's obvious because yeah. I've had hundreds of students do it. But to guys who are just about to do it, they don't really know the value. These motherfuckers yeah. right here, they're going to be new people in three days. Huh? <laughs> just like women are out there waiting for you to go out and approach them because there aren't enough guys in the world who are going out and approaching women. I can tell you that for a fact. So you going out and approaching and saying hi is already going to put you in a huge huge just like hugely different category in her mind from 99 percent of guys out there number one and then the, the second thing is that like when you start to realize every single girl that walks by is you know the next potential person you're gonna have sex with your girlfriend your wife you know it's like at first it can be kind of like oh fuck like oh my god this i'm not approaching and this could be my wife and whatever but when you start to actually get into it and you see the results that can come from it, what starts to happen is you realize how many opportunities you have every day. It's too much almost. So when you can like go after what you want on a consistent basis, you don't have to like overwhelm yourself and take advantage of everyone, but you can pick and choose. And in the same way, money is out there in the world just waiting for you to develop something that is valuable and that is worth that amount of money. And I mean, dude, you're a perfect example of taking something that you love, that you're passionate about, and that impacts people's lives in a huge way, and being able to, to actually make a business out of it. Yeah. And everybody has a passion. Dude, everybody has a passion. It's just about making that a part of your life every single day, getting over that fear of failure, whether it means you're an entrepreneur, whether it means you actually stick with it when you face challenges and struggles. Because dude, that was what happened, going back to the story, full circle, man. When the girl going up the escalator rejected me the first time, you were like, get your ass around. Like, you didn't even think about it. You were like, this is the most illogical thing for you to do to turn around after she's walking away. It's like, no, she said no once. That's, the, that's actually where things start. You know, it's like, you take, you take that off the table. It's like, she's going to put up resistance. There's going to be at least one no. It's, it's similar to sales. Like Jordan Belford, the Wolf of Wall Street, in his uh, Straight Line Persuasion, he talks all about how the sale starts at the first no. That's how you know when things are serious because you have actually gotten them to make a decision one way or another, and it's all about whether or not you can then deal with whatever objections they have, right? So they don't know you, they don't know you well enough, they, like you're not their type, whatever, but you're like, dude, it's, it, blew, it blew your mind. I could tell it blew your mind that I was like walking back in a sense because you were just like, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch you right now. But going back after that first no and still talking to her and seeing that she was more receptive the second time literally changed. It would like, if there was anything that I could say actually blew my mind, I would say that took all of the assumptions. Like if, if this table were my belief system, it literally kicked the legs out and I had no legs to stand on anymore. And I was just like, everything I know about the world and women is a lie. Like, what happened right now? Can you get her number? Yeah. That's, that's right. Yeah, because- That was your fucking moment of, oh, yeah. Because you, you, you got the no, went back, and then came back with her number. And then you were like, what the fuck? And I was like, I fucking told you. Yeah. Because I could tell she likes you too. Yeah, she liked me. She liked Here's the thing, so the first thing when I went and I was like, hey, you yeah. You guys are gonna have a great time. I was, I was like, hey, yeah. You know, I was just joking about that earlier, but it's really because I think you're hot and you made me kind of nervous. And she was like, oh, where are you from? Like she started to have a legitimate conversation with me and I was just like, wait a minute, what? Like you actually want to talk to me? And like the other exercise where straight up, so this is what freaked me out the first time was doing the exercise where you're just sort of like, uh, for 30 seconds, girls will stand there and they will like wait for you to say what you were going to say. And that more than anything 
blew my mind. Like the first time she was like, I'm sorry, and like left, and that's why I almost passed out, because I was like, I just embarrassed myself so bad that she felt bad for like making me that embarrassed, you know what I mean? <laughs> like she felt bad for bringing that on me. And then the second time I did it, she was like, what, what? And I was like, oh, I was like, dude, you're, <laughs> yeah, sorry, my mind just totally blanked. I feel like I'm on candid camera right now or something, but no, you're just totally hot. And dude, I got her number. As we were walking to the parking lot outside of Nordstrom, it like, I was like, wait a minute. There's something here that like, is not taught in pickup because it's all about doing the right thing at the right time. And you get so obsessed with this idea that like, there's perfection and that it's all about being smooth. It's all about doing things in a way that like will never rock the boat. And because you're just like, fucking alpha male beast already, she's gonna want your dick. And it's just not how it happens. So it's not, so we're not trying to like provide a rejection proof way of living. We're not trying to provide a failure proof way of living. It's really like trying to help people get over this, this conditioned belief system where we're more afraid of failure than we are of boredom. Dude, that's like, yes. And I think in some summary, other, yes. In summary, <laughs> in summary, uh, how many girls have you had sex with since the boot camp? Because <laughs> that's what I want to know. I lost count. How many girls? If that's really what you want. Ballpark. What three, are you three years it's been. Well, it has been three years. I would say ballpark. Uh, sexual experiences is way more than the number I've had sex with because I've actually gotten way more picky when it comes to sex. Okay. Um, so I would say sexual experiences over 100, but when it comes to sex, it's actually uh, closer to like. 10. 10, okay. Yeah. So a little hand job, a little low job, uh, making out, ass grabbing. But what's cool is that... That's a lot of experience. What's cool is that I actually started to get into serious relationships, which is why that number is lower, because uh -huh. I found that it's actually not very satisfying to just continue to do like cold approaches and just meet different girls and then just leave them. Because like, dude, when, when you are an awesome person and you approach a girl and she has sex with you and then you don't, contact her again she's fucking crushed dude she's like i'm never gonna meet a guy that cool again that's what's going through her mind and like you fucking did that to her even though you could have like avoided that if you weren't so bought into a fucking pickup do you have a girlfriend now or a special lady i actually just broke up with a girl because she moved out of the country uh she was here on a visa and uh had to go back to her home country so geographically we are separated uh which makes me single yep Okay. For any girls watching this video. For any ladies out there, this guy got some skills. Or dudes. So, uh, so give us the juicy conclusion. Oh, dude, the juicy conclusion is that you were born to already have all of the skills that you need with women. You have a dick, she has a vagina, it's not rocket science. Like, the... <laughs> how? Two... Wait, it's my dick, hang on. My dick. Oh, please no, <laughs> stop it. You're breaking me. I might want to have a family one day. Go ahead, sorry. Oh man. That's, obviously that doesn't represent that, everyone's dick. That's just- I like, was gonna say, yeah. Uh, could, could, could <laughs> just like, have you started yet? I mean, Where's yeah. you starting? I'm ready. Oh, come on, it's 10.30 already. I've got school in the morning. So the juicy conclusion. Uh, Don't be a fag. Yeah, basically. Drugs are bad. Yep. Except for ayahuasca, I heard that's pretty awesome. I heard we'll you did ayahuasca. We'll talk about that separate, <laughs> separate video. Uh, so dude, what can I tell you? It's awesome to hear this stuff. I mean, it was so exciting for me to hear you're in town because I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can find out what the fuck happened Dude, to this yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's awesome to get it, to hear it and to get it on camera. Woo, boy, this is gonna sell a lot of boot camps. Fuck yeah, daddy's gonna make some money. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, Cause daddy's, daddy's good, but I could always use more. Um, because making more money is helping more people. Oh yeah, what a business that's what it to That's what it means, that's what it means. But yeah, no, that's awesome. That's Jay, I'm Sasha, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, for which you got paid zero dollars. They're not gonna believe it, tell them the truth, tell them the truth. Well, thanks for like, yeah, I'm not getting paid shit for this video, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I fucked him over. Uh, Jesus. Right. See you guys. Yeah, you, want? I bet. you want me to pull my arm over here? Yeah. You want me to brush my Exclusively. Hands you want me to give a little peck on the mouth? Okay.
Oh, he, because he's done my course, he's not going to back away from that. See, that's not that hey scary for him anymore. This is all caught on video. Which is, uh, let me this could be the, the exclusive before. porn channel for Sasha boot camp. Would you have let me kiss you on the mouth before the boot camp? Or you Dude, away? fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck no. So I've turned him into a baller. It's beautiful. Yeah. Hey. All right, tongue this time. No. Ah. Uh, uh, he got excited. Look at her. Yeah. Oh, he was, would you have done it seriously? Uh, I'll, I'll still do it. This is see what I've, I've gone too far now. I'm creating oh, monsters. Yeah. I'm scaring myself now. <laughs>